I have been the luckiest woman in the world to have had the career I've had. Touch has lost all its magic. I've never in my life had anything happen that I hated, that I loathed like I do that. Directed by Clarence Brown, Letty Linton is a 1932 melodrama starring Joan Crawford, Robert Montgomery, and Neil Zaster. The film revolves around New York City socialite Letty, who wants to end her relationship with Emil. While on a steamship, Letty falls for Jerry, but is shocked to see Emil waiting for her at the dock upon her return. Emil eventually blackmails Letty with love letters, ending with Emil's shocking death. Letty Linton was based on the 1931 novel of the same name by Marie Adelaide Belloc Lowndes, which was inspired by an actual murder trial that took place in 1857 Scotland. In early 1931, Metro and Golden Mayer agreed to purchase the rights to a 1930 play, Dishonored Lady, for $30,000 by Edward Sheldon and Margaret Barnes. If the Hayes office approved an adaptation. Like the novel, the play was also based on the 1857 murder trial. The Hayes office did not approve an adaptation, so in December of 1931, MGM decided to purchase the right to the novel Letty Lytton for $3,500, and production began on February 24th. Robert Young was initially considered for the part of Jerry Darrow. The alternative title during production was Redeemed and Promiscuous. Crawford also befriended hair salon owner Sidney Gilleroff and brought him back to Hollywood to do her hair in the film. Promotional photos for the film were actually on set of Grand Hotel. In Joan Crawford's autobiography, A Portrait of Joan, she notes, The only time I could be with Clark was on the set, and I was disconsolate that I was cast in Letty Linton without him. Clarence Brown, who also directed Letty, knew. He came up to me one day just before a big scene and said, Sato Vos, I understand, Joan, I know who you're missing. I threw my arms about his dear professorial neck and went right into my crying scene, my own unhappy tears for unhappy Letty. They had developed a close relationship by this time, with Gable say one day they would marry, though Crawford mentioned she would not do anything to hurt her friend Mrs. Clark Gable. Production finished on March 28th, with Crawford gifting the director an engraved gold watch with a gold coin and laid in the case. Released on May 14, 1932, the movie was initially banned in some U.S. states and countries like Switzerland, Italy, and South Africa. England banned the film, reasoning in it justified homicide without penalty. However, some places later released edited versions of the film. Letty Lytton made $754,000 at the box office in North America and $418,000 elsewhere. Letty Lytton received praise from critics and audiences. Grand Hotel was also running in theaters at the same time. Photoplay magazine said, quote, The gripping simple manner in which this picture unfolds stands and squarely among the best of the month. Joan Crawford as Letty is at her best. Motion picture Herald said, Almost everything one can wish for entertainment has been injected in the superbly acted and directed production. The gowns which Miss Crawford wears will be the talk of your town for weeks after, and how she wears them. However, some criticize Crawford for her bold makeup and its risky theme for the time. No one, however, criticized Crawford for her famous Letty Linton dress. In fact, they loved it. Featuring a large puff sleeve with a dramatic silhouette, the dress was so popular that it sparked a new fashion trend, with many women replicating the look at home. Designed by MGM designer at the time, Gilbert Adrian, replicas are said to have sold over half a million copies at Macy's and over one million in America alone. Adrian said of the dress in Movie Classic Magazine in 1937, quote, I put those huge sleeves on Miss Crawford and Letty Linton because she was playing an extreme person, and it suited her character to have extreme clothes. They happened to click with the entire world. Joan Crawford later said in Motion Picture Magazine, quote, If I am copied, it is because of my clothes, and Adrian designs those, so Adrian is responsible for all of that. Dress was also apparently copied in Paris, France. Edith Head said it was, in terms of fashion, quote, the most influential in film history. Some reviews of the film noted similarities between the play and movie, rather than the novel. Shortly after, in July 1932, MGM faced a copyright infringement lawsuit from playwright Sheldon and Barnes, who alleged the studio had unlawfully adapted their play to Sonnet Lady, 
and the 1932 film Letty Linton. Although the preliminary hearing exonerated MGM, the playwrights pursued further legal action with another lawsuit in both California and New York courts. In 1934, one court dismissed the case, but another favored the plaintiff in August 1936, leading to the film being commercially unavailable since. MGM appealed, and the U.S. Supreme Court declined to hear the case, leading to continued appeal hearings until May 1938. The U.S. District Court agreed with the playwrights, determining the studio owed them equivalent to the net profits of the film, around $587,000 plus court and legal fees. MGM was dissatisfied with the ruling and appealed again, asking for a reduction. In January 1939, federal judge Vincent L. Liebel justified the decision but reduced the amount by $55,000. With MGM still dissatisfied, the case finally reached the Supreme Court in March of 1940, with Chief Justice Charles Evan Hughes determining that the playwrights were entitled to only around $160,000, being one-fifth of the film's profits. This ruling was based on the idea that the main allure of the motion picture was the movie star, not the authors or the story itself. Currently, only low-quality copies of the film exist today. Letty Linton will only become legally available upon the expiration of the play's copyright in 2025. War Archives currently owns the rights and a preserved reel of the film, with many fans hopeful for a remastered re-release. I'm glad I did it. 